What are you playing, Rosie? Playing Parappa Rappa 2 at the moment, Dave. I'll tell you what, it's a great game. It's a game where uh, Parappa basically wants to learn how to become an adult uh, because the whole world has been taken over by noodles. Like, literally, everything's turning into noodles. So you went on a date with your girlfriend, who's a flower, and um, she made you some noodles, which you're like, oh my god, I really don't want noodles. I've just won a lifetime supply of noodles. Don't want anything more. I'm going to get a burger. And everything in this burger place is turning into noodles. And then the guy's like, we have no burgers. So then this ghost comes in because he's the old owner. And he's like, oh, this is ridiculous. Where's a good old burger when you need one? So now he's teaching Parappa how to make burgers rather than the actual owner and stuff. So at the moment, we're just making burgers. Uh, any questions? No, no, that clears everything up. Thank you, Rosie. Coincidentally, you've caught me thinking about seven games we can't believe actually exist. Entry one is Everything, which is both the name of the game and a description of what you can play as. Yes, in Everything, you can be everything and experience everything on the emotional spectrum too, from warm laughter at the charming clipped animation of the animals to a full-on existential crisis as the game makes you realise how you're both unimaginably massive on a subatomic level and also infinitesimally small on a cosmic one. In everything, you can play as an atom, or you can play as an entire cluster of galaxies. It's a game that tugs at your perception of things, encouraging you to look at the universe from a position outside yourself, to realise concepts such as large or small are entirely subjective to the one who is perceiving them. Also, you get to listen to some wonderful audio clips from the late philosopher Alan Watts, whose calming tones help extinguish any rising dread you may be feeling from the realisation of your own significance. Listening to Watts articulate ruminations on the nature of self and our place among the stars and atoms as a bear cartoonishly flips from its head to its feet is an experience as surreal as it is unique. I can't believe everything exists, but I am really glad it does. Entry number two. Nobby Nobby Boy, a title that in Japanese is a fun play on words, Nobby meaning to stretch and Nobby Nobby meaning carefree, although Boy, that's the name of the strange quadrupedal cartoon worm you're controlling, does have some cares like can I stretch far enough that I can earn enough points for girl to stretch from Earth all around the planets and to the sun and back? Yes, that is correct. That's the goal. Or was the goal back when Nobby Nobby Boy was released on PS3 back in 2009. Stretch out Boy in the game by moving the left and right analogue sticks and together, online with everyone else in the world, earn enough points for Girl to stretch out into the solar system, unlocking new levels as she goes. It's an amazing concept and players unlocked these new levels faster than anyone anticipated. Four days after release, Girl had already stretched to the moon. A month later, she'd reached Mars. Six months later, Nobby Nobby Boy players had cumulatively earned enough points by stretching in the game, remember? For Girl to stretch all the way to Jupiter. It was then on to Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto and all the way back to the Sun before stretching around past Mercury, Venus and finally back to Earth. And that's Nobby Nobby Boy, a wonderfully bizarre game about community and cooperation and working together and stretching this happy little four-legged rainbow boy as far as he can go, even if it means he gets tangled up worse than a set of old Christmas lights. We're carrying on the theme of stretching for entry number three, Push Me Pull You, a multiplayer favourite in the access office where two players each control one head of a two-headed, um, worm person and work together to defeat another two-player controlled two-headed worm person in a variety of fun games. Games such as Keep the Ball in Your Area, which sounds simple enough, but when you're wrestling with your opponents and often your own teammate, things can very quickly take a turn for the ridiculous 
and often hilarious. Push Me Pull You really is a game about teamwork. You and your friend are locked together inside one body. Your two minds have to think and act as one. You can move and stretch and contract and constrict. You'll need to position yourself in such a way that your opponent is restricted, although lose concentration and you can often find yourself on the back foot. What often happens is matches descend into fantastic chaos. You'll have this writhing mass of flesh in the centre. You won't know where the ball is or really what you're doing. You'll break down in hysterical laughter and think to yourself, <laughs> What a brilliant game. Why does this exist? How did they come up with this? I mean, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall when this was being greenlit. Yeah, a flesh worm, I said, with two heads. And the heads are different. They can be male or female, young or old, bald or with lustrous hair. But yes, they are both part of the same fleshy, wormy being. And they wrestle each other. Cool? Cool. Entry 4, I am bread. Yes, this is a game where you control a slice of bread and is from Bossa Studios, the team that brought you Surgeon Simulator. So expect the same kind of madcap physics-based fun, but this time with a slice of bread instead of people's insides. I remember playing this for the first time and being a little bit sceptical and thinking, you know, how are you going to centre an entire game around playing as a piece of bread. Turns out like this. You use the shoulder buttons to control each corner of your slice, shuffling, rolling and climbing your way across white goods and kitchen tiles, completing various tasks, all while staying as clean as possible. For instance, you don't want to be caught on the kitchen floor. The three second rule is usually what I live by and you can see here, back when I played it with the dev team, I went way beyond that. Your edibility decreases until eventually Eventually, you reach a point where even your dog would turn its nose up. No one is eating that. F. Although, strangely, rubbing your bready underside on baked beans doesn't reduce your edibility at all. Unpopular opinion, I know, but baked beans... Anyway, I Am Bread really is an absolute joy to play. You'll be doubled up with laughter, manoeuvring your wheaty hero through various challenges, all thoughts of, this is a bit weird, isn't it, banished to the long forgotten past. Why would you make a game where you control a piece of bread? Why wouldn't you more like get I Am Bread in your lives now? Next up, no one can stop Mr. Domino, a game so crazy it's got an exclamation mark in the title. This PS1 cult favourite, released in 1998, sees you playing as one of five anthropomorphic dominoes, each with unique abilities. There's our hero and protagonist, Mr. Domino, who runs at normal speed. There's Miss Domino, who skips instead of runs. There's Bruce, who's kind of an evil domino who runs really fast. A domino only expert, no one can stop Mr. Domino players should control. Pierre Domino, a domino with glasses, and finally there's D triangle M dot question mark zero, uh, domino anomaly, uh, dominomaly. <laughs> who is the fastest of all the dominoes. Already this game deserves a place on our list and all I've done is introduce the characters. So what you have to do is run, basically. Run and run and run and avoid all the obstacles and at the end make everything fall over. Like on those clever adverts you sometimes see where a chain reaction makes a cool thing happen and you think to yourself how many times did it take to set that up? Essentially, No One Can Stop Mr. Domino is an endless runner puzzle title where avoiding pitfalls is achieved with successful presses of the D-pad and you get to knock things down at the end. It's cleverly designed, great fun to play and you get to play as a domino tile with legs and a smiley face. What's not to like? Entry 6 on this list of games Rosie keeps going on about, I mean, games that we can't believe exist, is Incredible Crisis, a PS1 title that's essentially a collection of fun mini-games woven together by a moving story about a forgotten birthday. It's Grandma Haruko's big day and she wants her family together. Unfortunately, they've all forgotten about it. And so mum, dad, son and daughter all have to overcome outlandish tasks and obstacles to get back in time. It's like something out of a stress dream. You know, 
you know, I had to get home from work when all of a sudden my colleagues challenged me to a dance-off. And so I danced and danced and danced and it was really strange because this never usually happens at work and and anyway I, I finished that when all of a sudden this giant stone globe crashed through the wall and chased me down the office corridor and so I ran and ran and ran and fell out of the window where I nearly died but miraculously didn't and woke up in the back of an ambulance. The paramedics asked me a bunch of difficult questions and then when I'd got them right accidentally dropped me into traffic while still strapped to the stretcher and I had to dodge traffic signs and mopeds and cars and seriously a dream psychologist would have a field day with this stuff and this is incredible crisis a series of escalating disasters featuring one seriously unlucky family who just want to get home in time for grandma's birthday the moral of the story just write down everyone's birthday on your calendar so you don't forget that way you're never in one of those positions where something unexpected comes crashing through the wall at work and you have to run away from it Final entry on this list of games we can't believe exist. It's Hateful Boyfriend, a game I can't even explain. It's a visual novel starring pigeons. And other birds too, not just pigeons. It's a world populated by sapient avians, but for some reason you play as the only human attending St. Pidgeo Nation's Institute for Gifted Birds, searching for love among your feathery friends. You're in control of dialogue options and the characters are birds, yes, but there's a lot of depth here. The writing and story pulling you into a game you'll probably be chortling away at at the beginning. <laughs> Pigeon but become heavily invested in by the end. I have no idea why Hateful Boyfriend exists. You know, try explaining a game about dating pigeons to your friends. But you know what? I think the world would absolutely be a slightly worse place without it. We're glad you're here, Hateful Boyfriend, you mad thing you. So there we go, seven games we can't believe actually exist. Have you played any of these? Can you think of any more we've missed? Let us know in the comments, give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and click that notification bell so you're always up to date with the latest Friday feature. Thanks for watching, and see you again soon. For the players.